By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And thank you for tuning in once again. And today we have a match for you between Stasis Vault and Shadow Spectre. My opponent is Hank and he's playing with the Stasis Vault deck. Now I've very recently done a deck deck on this deck already. So if you'd like to know more about the Stasis Vault deck, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now on your screen. Obviously this deck is built around Stasis and Time Vault and it's a combo prison deck. Now I'm playing with Shadow Spectre and that's named after uh, the, the Elves of Deep Shadow, a beautiful card from the dark, love the art, and it's named after the Hypnotic Spectre. But the deck has much more to offer, it's green, it's black, and it's red. And if you'd like to know more about that deck, you can click on the, info, on the other info card that's appearing right now. And it'll take you to a movie where I show the deck picture. So that's basically it, and let's now quickly go to game one and see some of the action. Game number one is about to begin. Now I'm playing on the right side, obviously, with the Timmy Playmat, and my opponent Hank with the Stasis Vault deck is playing on the left side. And uh, curious to see here. Oh, and there's a Library of Alexandria here, turn one. Um, pretty good opening for me as well with the Elves of Deep Shadow. Hopefully, I can find one of my Ice Storms. I'm playing with a full playset of Ice Storms in my deck. And let's see what I can do. Playing a Bayou here. Playing a Sylvan Library, paying a life, another Elves. So it's a pretty good start for me, but no Ice Storm yet. And that means that my opponent can keep drawing cards. And of course, when you're playing against a combo deck, you don't want to see that happening. So hopefully I can quickly find an Ice Storm with the help of that Sylvan Library. And there's a Mox Ruby passing turn. Looking at my three cards... Let's see what I'm going to do. Just drawing one. Interesting. Usually I play pretty aggressive with the Sylvan. Dealing a damage here. Tapping for four. And look at that. An Urnum Jin. That's pretty nice. A little bit of an old man of the sea action there going on the side. But that's not included in the game. And there's a basic island here by Hank. Tapping two. Interesting. There's a Howling Mine. Oh, look at this. Pretty good play. Twiddle on the Time Vault. Taking an extra turn after this one. That means he gets to take the benefit from the Howling Mine first. And just seeing that Twiddle Time Vault combo, it, I always like it. I like Twiddle as a card. It's very useful. Oh, and this is difficult for me. Playing in the Abyss. I'm not playing any Enchant Removal main. I have two Tranquilities in the sideboard, but there's not much I can do against the Abyss. I need my Chaos Orb to deal with it. Let's see if I can find some Artifact Removal or some Land Removal at least to take care of the Loa or the Howling Mine. Going to 14 here, drawing an extra card with the Sylvan. And of course I had to sack one of my Elves of Deep Shadow. I think that Abyss is going to be really difficult, especially when it gets a lock together. Going in here for four, playing a Giant Grove, but there's a Boomerang. Ay ay ay! that means I'm losing a card for nothing here. After that, playing an Hypnotic Spectre, going to 13 here, at least that's something. Trying to keep some pressure on my opponent, if he can find a Stasis now, I'm pretty much done for. And he's already drawn a lot of cards with that Loa and that Howling Mine. He's not even using the Loa now anymore. He's just using it for mana. I'm, uh, it looks like I'm switching my, uh, my Hippie here for an unlimited version. Look at that Mind Twist. Brutal. Losing my entire hand, including Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is kind of my protection against Mind Twist. But it's gone now. I do have a Regrowth, but I don't think it's going to be very relevant. Has to discard the Time Vault, but already has one on the board. And there I go, just playing out creatures, especially the birds is important here for me, because I can sack it to the Abyss and still keep some pressure on Hank here. But he's still on 17 and I'm on 5. And there's a Dishenchant on my Sylvan to make matters even worse. And there's a Stasis. Ay, 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 ay. Stasis Abyss. Oh, that's just a killer. And it's nice to see the Stasis Vault deck working so well. 
And now I have to choose, am I going to use the mana of the Birds of Paradise to play some, something? Am I going to damage Hank with the Hippie? I think I'm choosing not to because his hand is empty. And there I go, playing another Elves of Deep Shadow. Passing turn here, Hank is playing the upkeep cost, drawing two, playing an island, passing turn. Sacking the birds here. Interesting choice. Maybe the elves would have been better, Elves of Deep Shadow. I don't think it matters that much. Let me know what you think, what would you have done, or sack the birds or sack the elves. Passing turn here. And it looked like like it looks like Hank is running low on mana for the stasis, but he can always untap the time vault, give me an extra turn. Tapping three here, going to three life as well, taking two damage because of the city of brass and the elves playing a hypnotic specter. And let's see if Hank is going to give me my turn back. That's exactly what he's doing. And I'm just being dragged deeper and deeper into the mud. Attacking here, at least losing a stasis. I don't think it's going to matter much. It's his turn. He's not paying for his stasis, so it goes to the graveyard. But remember, he can tap his time vault again and take an extra turn. Playing a, another Black Vice. My hand is still pretty empty at this point. But the Black Vices are his main win con. Playing a Lotus. Oh, well done. Look at that. He's playing a Time Twister. So that means we're both drawing seven new cards. And with those two Black Vices in hand, it means I'm pretty much dead. I don't think there's anything that can save me because I only have one red open. So I could play, for instance, a Lightning Bolt. I think that's one of the only spells I can play, or a Giant Grove. Um, but, you know, that's not going to save me, because then I'll still have a 6 in hand. And of course, Hank is drawing another card with his library. Let's see, Estase is passing... Is he passing turn? Sorry, is he passing turn, or... Playing in Soul Ring, and... Of course, a Black Lotus, and there there I go. <laughs> That's it. Oh, I'm happy I can go to the sideboard, because I definitely want to board in some Tranquilities uh, to take care of this. Maybe some Shatters as well. So um, I'm going to go to my sideboard, and we'll see you back in game number two. Game number two is about to begin. At least I get to start. Hopefully I don't have a Library of Alexandria against me again. Or at least finding an ice storm pretty quickly. Or maybe I can find my library. That would be nice. Anyway, it was really nice to see the stasis deck going off. But um, hopefully my sideboarding has helped here. Oh, and I'm a little bit too excited with starting there. We see that Hank is taking a mulligan with that nice tabernacle there in his opening hand. But yeah, I can see why he took a mulligan. We're playing according to the London mulligan rules. So... You can just look at his 7, pick one, and put that on the bottom. And so far, I have to say, um, I really like this uh, way of, uh, of playing with the, with the London Mulligan rule. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think it's, uh, it's too much of an advantage for specific decks? What is your experience with the new rule? Attacking here with my Elves of Deep Shadow and dealing 4 damage with that giant growth. So I think my tactic here is just trying to put as much damage in as I can. I yuck, there's the abyss again. Maybe he boarded in an extra abyss that's definitely possible from his sideboard. Playing a strip on here over the dual land. And I'm just trying to keep him at bay. And there's a Sylvan library. Ay ay ay, very quick disenchant. That's very unfortunate. Because I boarded in two tranquilities. But can I find them? And uh, the autograph on the middle city of brass is by Richard Garfield, by the way. That's why it looks a little different. Oh, this is killing. Oh, this is killing. Yeah, playing double bolt, but who cares? Oh, my lands. Oh, that's sitting in a bottle. I didn't see that coming. Oh, this is a huge problem. Oh, I don't... Oh, man. Okay, finding my second Taiga here. That Black Vice on the battlefield. 
at least finding a chaos orb but then the big question is what to orb i mean everything is is a problem here i mean it's the abyss or the city in a bottle remember i also play with urnum gens i think the abyss needs to go first what am i going to do playing a mistress factory here passing turn i can just wait till end step of course I don't have to rush anything and what are we going to see here there's a howling mine drawing two and finding a shatter will there be a counter spell and yes there's a mana drain and then in response i do the flip at least that's a hit and playing a library of alexandria i mean it's not great because you've got a black vice against you but I'm trying to to find answers to all the problems that I have here. And I guess the Abyss is not the biggest problem at the moment. Oh, here, there we have a new biggest problem. That's the Stasis. Ay, 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 ay. Passing turn here. Hopefully, Hank cannot find his Time Vault. Playing out his own City of Brass here. Tapping two lands. Finding another Howling Mine. Drawing three, playing a Bayou, tapping three here, a Tranquility, that's pretty nice, although, let me know what you would have done, because he only had one land open, and now he gets to untap, problem of course with Tranquility is that it is a sorcery, I, I think I made a misplay here, because now I'm allowing Hank to untap with a full hand, and look at that, another stasis. So definitely a misplay on my part. And that's very unfortunate because I feel there could have been a way for me to come back into this game. And instead I'm locked more than ever. Got a double vice against me, got a handful of cards. And only one untapped Mishra's factory, so that's not going to help me here. And Hank has a lot of islands there to invest, and of course that... Double Howling Mine is going to give him lands till the end of days. Or let him find a Time Vault and he can do his Time Vault Stasis trick. And look at it, there it is already. And it comes tapped into play, but he can untap it and give me an extra turn, which is worthless for me because everything's tapped. As a matter of fact, it's a problem because he has that double vice. And that's the thing when you're playing against a prison deck like this, you have to be very uh, thoughtful about, you know, the openings that you that you have. So I had that moment where I could play the Tranquility and I shouldn't have done that. But my mind was, hey, I'm taking care of an Abyss and a Stasis. Let's just do it because I have the option now. And as we know now, that was a mistake here. I have to, un have to discard a lot. He's giving me an extra turn as expected, taking even more damage, going to three life now. And this is pretty much done for. And that means that my Shadow Spectre deck is just going to lose here. 2 to 0. Oh, almost. Actually getting him to 5 here. That's pretty exciting. If if I would have had like an extra mana, I could have... No, I don't have a Berserk. But if I would have had a Berserk and an extra green land anyway, if, 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 if doesn't count in Magic the Gathering. Losing here 2 to 0. Really nice to see that Stasis deck working especially that first game and look at that the sideboard i boarded in three shatters and two tranquilities and my opponent boarded in one city an extra abyss of course that balance to take care of all that creatures and yeah i think moat is also a good one here and that was the game. I definitely didn't expect to go down here with 2-0. At least I expected a 2-1 after that sideboarding. Okay, I guess I have to practice a little bit more against these decks. But it was really nice to see a combo prison deck like this one uh, in full swing. So thank you, Hank, for sharing the deck with us. Um, for now, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing. If you're not a member yet, liking the channel helps as well. Leaving a comment helps even more. Also, sharing this video on your socials if you like it is very much appreciated. Now, as you probably know, or maybe you don't, 
uh, we have a Patreon. And with we, I just mean me. I have a Patreon page for Timmy Talks for the show. So if you want to, and if you can miss uh, a couple of dollars a month, you can now support the show financially as well. On the Patreon page that you can see now before you, um, you can see what I want to spend the money on and how I want to improve this channel in the future. So your support is very much appreciated. And I'm very happy to show you or to tell you that I already have 20 patrons at this point. So let's look at the end credits and look at the patrons of Timmy Talks. Ich kann das Finger zu Sumba gesehen.